Last time we looked at starter motors and uh, the wiring circuits for them. This time we're going to continue to look at starter motors. So let's dive straight in. So I'm using SketchUp Pro here to uh, rotate a model of a starter motor and this is generally the type of starter motor, a pre-engaged starter motor, that you'll see on your small boat engine. So if we take a section through the starter motor you can see it's got all the bits and pieces that we talked about last time. The armature, the commutator, there's bearings in there. But there's an interesting piece at the front. When the solenoid engages, which is this piece on the side, it pushes forward a small sprocket gear. Now how does this work? Well, there's a lever inside and when it moves forward it engages with the starter ring gear on your flywheel, like this. It's also rotating at the same time. Solenoid fires and the gear wheel moves forward, engaging with the flywheel. Here's a better illustration. So this illustration is really good. You can see that the solenoid does two things. When it pulls in, it pulls the lever back and pushes the sprocket forward and it also connects two contacts on the back of the solenoid which send positive flow to the starter motor to make it rotate. It's a clever illustration. You can also see the commutator, the armature, the brushes and inside the solenoid the coil and the magnets. This covers all the things that we've looked at previously. But remember from the outside your starter motor is just going to look like this and work like this. You remember last time we showed you this in a circuit diagram. This is exactly how it works. But there are other types of starter motor. Now you won't see this one very often these days but it's not pre-engage. So the way this works is there's a Bendix thread on the end of the shaft when the motor starts to rotate, the inertia pulls forward the sprocket and the weight engaging with the starter ring gear. Same principle, but you don't see these things very often now, but at least you know how it works. So before we start this next bit, I need to explain. David had been at anchor for a couple of days and had trouble starting his engine. We managed to jump the domestic batteries across to the starter battery and get him going. His domestic batteries had plenty of power because the solar had been charging them but not the engine battery. Right, so it's been, it had, it's had a full charge, three, yeah. three or four days. Oh, it's had it since we've arrived, so two okay. weeks. Two weeks of charging. Yeah. And... Been disconnected for 18 hours. 18 hours, so the battery should have settled out. Yeah. Let's have a look what we've got. Volts DC. Just zero those, and we've got. Oh no, that's it's disconnect that. Okay, there we go. Twelve point nine nine volts. Yeah. So you've got plenty of voltage. Yeah. And this is your starter battery. Yeah. And it's it's switched off actually under there at the moment. Okay. Well, you're going to put it under load on your machine, are you? Yeah. Well, there's two types of battery. You've got your domestic battery which are, and these are designed to give uh, a smaller amperage over a longer period. Yep. But a starter battery, you want loads of oomph to, to yep. fire the starter motor in. Yeah. So what, what can happen with them is that uh, they don't get charged up. You go out sailing, you know, you go out of port, you start your engine, that uses lots and lots of amps over a very, very short period, you know, 10, 15 seconds for the heaters and then um, two or three seconds for the starter motor. That is actually quite a drain on the battery. You run the battery for five, the engine for five minutes. Yeah. You turn the engine off and go sailing. You sail all day long, and then you come back in and you do exactly the same again. Start the engine. You know, 20, 25 yeah. seconds of, of high current draw. You run the engine for five minutes while you dock up, and then you shut the engine down. Now, if you're not on mains. Um, say you were doing that and you were sailing, what happens is the battery doesn't get enough amperage from the alternator 
for it to uh, get up to its full charge state. I've also got a feeling my windlass runs off that. Okie doke. Well let's have a look, your windlass should be running off the domestic. That's what they normally do. Oh, right, okay. But um, let's have a look what we've got here. Now, so there's two types of tester. There's the testers which test the voltage drop on these over a long period of time for your domestics. Yeah. And because you want cranking yeah. amps, what you do is we're going to test the actual cranking amps. Now this is for testing cranking amps. Right. And don't don't be alarmed that that might get very hot. Okay. Um, can you get underneath it? There we are, that's one. Now that can't touch because that's getting, yep. that's why I got that. Uh, yeah, just just want, before we connect this up and complete yep. the circuit, we just want to make sure that that's this, why I got this here. can we get that on there? Yeah. That's it. That's it, should insulate that. And this one there. Yeah. And all we do is push this for 15 seconds. What's that drawing a high current through that heat Lo element? Lots of current through that heat element. Heat element. And that is saying here that this that, that battery is okay. It's um Do it again. Let's wait for that to cool down because it will start glowing red hot. Oh right, okay. No. That's dropped to eleven now when um 11 volts when the, uh, the when the current's being drawn. That's not unusual. That and that's got up to back to 12 and a half. So I would say that your battery is okay. It's certainly on the stronger end yeah. of the scale. If it was down at sort of 10 volts yeah. voltage drop when it's on load, yeah. then we, we might want to think about it. And if it was down at eight, well, yeah. you know, obviously it's bad. It's it's bad, but it's showing okay. So, I mean, the only other thing to do. Oh, there we go. Is that battery now needs? That's the equivalent of trying to start your engine twice. Right. Okay. So you do need to reconnect your battery um, and get it back on charge again. It's um, but apart from that one time. When we did you, you haven't had to jump it across before. Uh, no, again. just twice this season. Once um, when we'd been sailing and we'd switched the, it, uh, naively, I'd switched the engine on four or five times in a three or four hour sail because we hadn't got yeah. quite enough wind. Yeah. And then the other time, uh, we'd been at anchor for quite a while. And that but I hadn't isolated the starter battery. So uh, when we're at five days at anchor and these go down to. Uh, 12.1, 12.29. Yeah. Then, if I hadn't if I haven't isolated that starter motor, it then acts as a full bank, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Because basically, what it's doing is is put them in parallel. So you just got to remember, have a sticker somewhere. Well, no, I just remember now. I mean, as I said to you, I don't know anything, so I just do as I'm told. <laughs> So you've made it to the end of the video, <clears throat> thanks very much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, we've certainly enjoyed the feedback and all of the comments that people have made. Um, the whole point of the series is to try and give you a basic understanding of how these things work and how to troubleshoot them. That's what it's all about. I think we've kind of done starter motors and electric motors now to death. From the previous videos you know how they work. Um, and how to uh, diagnose what's wrong with them. So next time I think what we'll do is we're going to look at alternators and we're going to look at solar. Now alternators aren't that complicated, they really aren't. You know the basics already. Uh, you did all that back in the electrical theory videos. So 
there's kind of two or three things that, that alternators uh, do when they stop working, and that's either the uh, regulator, uh, the power regulator, or the rectifier, or a broken belt. And of course, we're only covering the electrical side of things at the moment. The other thing that we're looking at is solar. and We get lots and lots of questions uh, on solar. So what we're going to do is we are going to um, do a bigger series on solar uh, and look at panels and the different types of charge regulator, that kind of thing. But as always, we'll do it in easy steps and teach you as you go so that you get something from it. So if you're enjoying these series of uh, videos, don't forget to uh, put a comment down there somewhere and uh, give us a big thumbs up. And if you haven't done already, subscribe. We've certainly enjoyed making the videos and the great feedback that we're getting from folks. So until next time, sail safe. Bye.